If you have been subscribed for a while, you'll know that my disturbing lists are a staple of my channel. I love horror movies, I love thrillers, but disturbing movies, they just have something, something else in them. And I know a lot of you feel the same because I recently did this video about traumatic, disturbing films. And let me tell you, the comment section was on fire. We see each other. I see you. You see me. We get each other. Do you know how rare that is? I do new lists all the time and I only try to include films I haven't spoken about yet and somehow on that video you guys still had some more fresh recommendations for me so I thought I'd put some to the test and I spent the last week <laughs> watching so many disturbing films. These were all movies recommended by you in the comment section of the traumatic disturbing movies video. A lot of them I had never heard about so I thought I would present my findings to you today. I'm here to report the goods and let you know if they pass my rating if they're traumatic or not but let me tell you everything I watched was disturbing to some degree so you all did a fantastic job. These are some gems. Let's begin. The first recommendation I took was from Bebe Lush. You seem to know your shit. This is a film from the 80s. It is not the 2022 film of the same name. Out of the Blue is a bizarre, dark slice of life drama where we follow CB, who's played by Linda Manns. And she is searching for her place in this world. CB is a rebellious kid obsessed with Elvis and punk music. And her rough start in life makes it hard for her to relate to other kids her age. Her mother is an addict and her dad is about to get out of jail. And her rebellious nature attracts her to some really dangerous situations. The interesting thing about this film is that we follow her through the aftermath or really the result of her tumultuous upbringing instead of her downfall. Although we do have some past traumas that are weaved in with a flashback and then something else a little bit later to give context to the situation. The film follows her as she drifts through life and into some really dangerous scenarios that she should be protected from. And we see her struggling with self-expression in a abusive environment but just wait for the wild conclusion I was not expecting it I found it really startling how CB resorts to childlike poses and comforts when she's exposed to horrific situations the film has a really strange brash tone and although a lot of things are inferred in the film it all comes to a head in the last 10 minutes and there is I wouldn't say a payoff, but it, it all makes sense. It leaves you with a horrific yet justified ending, I'll say that. Dennis Hopper plays the father and he also directs the film and he believes that this is a follow-up to the film Easy Rider. If you're looking to watch a film about doomed characters in a horrific family dynamic, Out of the Blue is a solid entry. It's not my favorite traumatic film, but I can see why it gets a little bit of a pass. <laughs> it's a funny one to start with because it's right on the cusp of being just disturbing and traumatic so I'm gonna keep it in the disturbing realm but you did you did really good with this recommendation thank you see Barbara came through with a list of recommendations some of them I have seen a lot of them I have spoken about but there was a couple that caught my eye and one was love Lisa I've never heard of this film and it has Kathy Bates and the late Philip Seymour Hoffman so I was sold on that alone I love both of them so much this one starts with a gut punch as we follow Wilson who is dealing with the unexpected death of his wife, Lisa. We follow him through his private struggle with grief, leading to avoidance and self-destruction. It's an understated film, more depressing than traumatic, but Hoffman is a phenomenal actor and this is such an important yet devastating role. It has another ending that's quite poetic. I don't wanna to say too much about this film because it is quite a slow, subtle film and if I give away a lot about his actual downfall and what's happening in the situation I feel like you know the whole film but it's really interesting to see how like he's coping mechanisms let's say that it's a slow crushing film but very effective with a clear purpose this one does not pass my traumatic list but it's a beautiful disturbing drama thank you so much for the recommendation at C Barber the, I can't believe I hadn't heard of this film it is beautiful in a sick way but Megan. This comment, Megan <laughs> has asked me for so long to watch The Painted Bird. And I'm not gonna lie, it probably was the three hour, almost three hour runtime that had been putting me off for so long. And I can tell you within the first minute of this film, I was severely traumatized 
this is the one this this blows them out of the water really this blows any recommendation i've had i think maybe in the first couple of minutes we see horrific animal abuse and that is only the start it's based on a controversial novel and we follow a boy who wanders through an eastern european countryside during world war ii where he witnesses and is subjected to some of the cruelest crimes in humanity in fact all of them the black and white film has minimal dialogue as the boy journeys through these atrocities meeting horrific characters in each destination the film is broken up to chapters so it's like they segment each piece of trauma and it's just one after the other piling on. It's almost like a defined start and end to each location. And let me tell you, these situations are so messed up and there are some really surprising cameos. It's a grueling, draw-dropping quest and it passes the traumatic test with flying colors. An interesting fact, the film isn't meant to reflect one specific country. So the spoken languages in it are made up of several different Eastern European languages. And the source material is also a little bit shaky because the writer, he wrote it based on his own life, but he came out later to say the story were all false but it is a rotten film that is so beautifully shot and so epic it's just an epic the elaborate sets are haunting and it's extremely effective in its intent i warn you it is a commitment with the runtime and the disturbing nature provides no relief you're basically watching a young boy being tortured in every single way possible but it does have a purpose because what he learns along the way about humanity kind of transforms him into the adult he will become I found the ending masterfully done. I don't know how an ending to such an epic film could make so much sense, but it is very subtle and very just a hit to the chest. And I'm also a really firm believer in long run times for journey films because I think that they need them. Two thumbs up for traumatic. This one, this one hits, this one hits hard. Good work. Fib, I don't know how to say your username, but your suggestion was for Clean Shaven. Another film I had not heard of and this one focuses on mental health. It's a 1993 drama thriller that delves into the story of Peter Winter, a man grappling with schizophrenia as he plans to reunite with his daughter, but a local detective is on his back with the assumption that he is a danger to society. This film is interesting. I feel like you need to watch until the end to get the full picture. The filmmaker's intent for this was to bring awareness to mental health and the fact he didn't like how mental health was being portrayed in other movies around this time. But I think it's a really interesting depiction for the early 90s and it does try and touch on a lot of issues we still have today in presenting these kinds of films and i think that you have to wait to see the full picture literally the full movie to understand what the filmmaker's intent truly is because you could watch the first 10 minutes of this and it doesn't look good the director was inspired to make this film because he had witnessed his friends struggle with schizophrenia and he wanted to aim for a realistic depiction showcasing daily anxieties i think his intent was more to immerse the audience within the perspective of the illness showing symptoms like auditory hallucinations but the plot is really interesting because it's deliberately left ambiguous so you don't know either way what's really happening just like if you were seeing it through his eyes not being able to tell what's real and what is his mental illness and the storyline of the detective seems really odd <laughs> at first but i promise if you stick with it there's a pretty good reveal. Overall, Clean Shaven has a particularly odd and unnerving feel. It's an uncomfortable watch. It was both bleak and depressing. <laughs> for sure, and a really interesting piece of film, but I don't find it to be traumatic. But again, a great little gem. And there is no doubt that Peter Green's performance as Peter Winter is commendable. Marika, thank you so much for recommending Rosetta. This one actually has a big reputation that I didn't know of. The 1999 French-Belgian drama is the dark story of a teenager who is struggling to keep everything together in a dire situation. Living in a caravan park with her alcoholic mother who is performing sexual favors for money, Rosetta is desperate for employment and to change her life. But as hard as she tries, it just seems like 
she can't change her circumstances. The film is slow and understated as we follow her around on her day-to-day -day activities, watching her struggle to keep entry-level jobs at no fault of her own. The film doesn't have any overbearing perspective that it's trying to force down your throat. You're just seeing how things are for Rosetta and basically peeking into her life. Rosetta won the Palm d'Or and Best Actress at the 1999 Cannes Film Festival. It's not particularly a graphic or shocking film, but as Marika suggested, it's very upsetting and in my own words, depressing. The film asks the viewer to follow along and walk in someone else's shoes, or in this case, in their boots. If you've seen it, you'll understand what I mean. And here we witness an undeniable struggle. I don't think it's traumatic, but it's very well done. And it's hard to even comprehend that the actress who played Rosetta is an actress because it seems so realistic. I think it's a very well done film, but not traumatic for me. Disturbing? Yeah. Okay, this next comment, I don't know how to say your name, I'm so sorry. I probably already mispronounced six things in this video or more, but you sealed my fate with this recommendation. I don't know how I hadn't heard of disturbing drama Gardens of the Night. It's quite a recent film. This is the detailed story of child abuse and trafficking as we follow the journey of two children who are kidnapped and sexually abused for years. It's an in-depth look at the process balanced with a childlike perspective. It details the ins and outs of grooming and the cycle of abuse as well as the horrors of normalizing it and it has an extensive cast including Gillian Jacobs, Evan Peters, John Melkovich and Jeremy Sisto. I don't think I've ever seen a film about this subject matter that gave so much insight and examples of the psychological trauma that these people go through. It also does really well to visualize the trauma and triggers and even though it's not a completely polished film it's a really well told story that's frightening, realistic and heart-wrenching. I'd say this one passes as trauma it gives a personal story to a faceless epidemic. One of the actors, Tom Arnold, who plays one of the abusers in this film, and let me tell you, there are a lot of them, uh, he is actually a survivor in real life of child abuse and he molded his character after his own perpetrator, uh, which I can't even imagine putting that into your performance at work professionally. You can tell there's a lot of heart put into this film and it's a cautionary tale, but also it gives voices to a lot of people who don't have one in this situation. I think it's a really powerful movie. I'm getting emotional. I think it's a very powerful movie. I don't think it's going for shock value at all, which is great when you think about the subject matter and it not being exploited, which I think is a very fine balance when you're going for disturbing cinema or sometimes unfortunately rare to find. Good job. Thank you so much for your recommendation. You made me cry. I did cry during the film, I have to say. Okay, one more because I honestly, I was putting myself through the ringer, but K. Marie suggested Savage Streets. This is a film starring Linda Blair that traumatized Marie when they were only eight years old. Marie, respectively, I've seen the film now. What the heck were you doing? Who let you watch this? This movie piqued my anxiety, but it is tonally exhausting. Savage Streets follows a girl group of supposedly high school students. Do these look like high school students to you? But they play a prank on a street gang infamous for drug dealing and violence. But the gang retaliates, finding their most vulnerable member and brutally assaulting her, but that's just the start of their reign of terror. This film contains so many 80s cliches. You got the fast cars, the punks, unfortunately the slurs. Again, 30 year olds playing teens, um, and also a lot of female, female only nudity, which makes for a very strange concoction because if we're talking about this brutal assault scene that happens and then they have so many topless women in this film just for the male gaze it's a very strange mix that makes me wonder who the demographic is and it makes it look like it's an 80s teen film that is just edgy for shock value in addition to this we get the youngest member of the gang who is regretting his choice to go along with their elaborate plans, I wouldn't say they're elaborate, dumb plans, 
violent plans and it feels like they're giving him almost a sympathetic side. I'm not really sure whose perspective we're following. It seems like a team film that took it a little bit too far without much intent behind it. Initially, I thought it was going to be a rape revenge film, but it really feels more like a highlight of all brutalization. I do think that this film is 100% disturbing. It's one of those films that I just don't know how it exists. Linda Blair is such an odd character in this film. She's like the tough girl, the cool girl at school that everyone loves, and she's like attacking other women, and I just felt like there would have been more of a balance with them doing a vigilante like kind of get back. It does seem like it's going that way and then it completely shifts direction. It's such an intensely violent film for a teen horror thriller. I do think that this film is 100% disturbing but with the tonal shift it feels less traumatic and more like it's aiming for a teen audience. So this one did not pass the bar, but a very interesting little, not cult classic, but strange Linda Blair film that you dug up for me. So thank you so much. Thank you for all of your recommendations. You guys are so clever and you have really good taste in film. Keep them coming. If you guys like this video, I'm happy to do more. I normally search around because I want to give you some fresh takes, but you guys also have great recommendations. If you haven't checked out my other disturbing list, I'll leave a whole playlist here. I've covered so many in the 10 years I've been on YouTube. It's disgusting, honestly. But thank you so much for your time. If you did enjoy this video, let me know down in the comments and I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and happy nightmares, I guess. Bye, friends.